Today, I'm going to show you an interesting case of a patient who underwent a disc replacement surgery in the neck, but continued to have problems afterwards. I will also show you how I fixed this problem. So this patient developed neck pain radiating into the arm after sustaining an injury. This condition is called cervical radiculopathy and is caused by a pinched nerve in the neck. The patient underwent an uncomplicated disc replacement surgery at C5, C6. After the surgery, the patient did well and the radiating symptoms into the arm resolved successfully. Unfortunately, not too long after that, the patient developed essentially the same radiating nerve pain into the other arm, pretty much in the same manner. The patient came to see me for a second opinion. When I examined the patient, the nerve pain was reproduced when they extended their neck and turned their head towards the affected side. This test is called Sperling's maneuver and is a classic test for a pinched nerve in the neck. To investigate this matter further, I checked x-rays of the cervical spine in three different positions. In the first position, the neck was flexed, meaning the patient was looking down. In the second position, the neck was neutral, meaning the patient was looking straight ahead. In the third position, the neck was in extension, meaning the patient was looking up. When you look at these x-rays carefully, you can see something quite interesting. When the patient was looking down, the back of the disc opens up as it should. When they extend their neck, however, the back of the disc closes down, but interestingly, it also slides backwards, something that it should not do. Also, when you look at the disc replacement from the front, in this view, you can see that the gap on the right and the left side is not the same. The fact that the patient's symptoms were reproduced by turning the head towards the affected side suggested that there was a dynamic instability of the disc replacement device. To treat this dynamic instability, I offered to remove this device and stabilize it with a anterior cervical fusion surgery. Let me show you how I did it. The first step was to make a left-sided incision at the neck. The disc replacement device was easily visualized and removed. I used special instruments to remove the bone spurs, which were pinching the C6 nerve between the C5 and C6 vertebrae. After decompressing the C6 nerve, I inserted a small piece of cadaver bone and placed it into the disc space. Next, I took a small titanium plate and secured it against the C5 and C6 vertebrae with screws. The patient did really well after the surgery. Almost immediately, the radiating neck and arm pain resolved completely. At long-term follow-up, the patient did very well and was pain-free. This surgical case is interesting because it is an example of a dynamic instability of a disc replacement device, which was fixed by simply stabilizing it with a fusion.